Oregon Iron Works got interested in ocean energy probably five or six years ago and started looking into uh, fabrication of buoys and um, had, had an interest in being involved in that new industry. Oregon Iron Works is a steel fabricator, precision machine shop, and integrator. Uh, we're involved in a lot of different industries like uh, space launch complexes, uh, marine craft, bridges, uh, hydroelectric, uh, electric streetcars, wave energy devices. Oregon Iron Works, after several years of working with OPT, was awarded the, um, this contract to build the first uh, PB150, which is the first commercial wave energy device um, in the United States. The buoy has created about 35 union wage jobs here at Oregon Iron Works. The final component, the spar, is still being built and it's really the last component and the most complex component. It's about nine feet in diameter, 103 feet long, and you've got this big component, but you've got surfaces on it that are precision. The rails that the float slides on need to be flat, and we had eight surfaces we had to do that, so we'd have to machine one surface, rotate it, machine another surface, and rotate it. And every time we did that, we'd have to set it up with our laser inspection equipment to make sure it was perfectly flat. So you've got the combination of big and heavy, but high precision. And that's one of the things that Oregon Iron Works is set up to do, very efficient at, and we really take a lot of pride in our ability to, to do that machining on, on huge parts. I really believe that, that Oregon has the opportunity to be a key player in, in the wave energy industry in the world. Because Oregon is such a, a, a central point for wave energy, um, there are a lot of companies that are interested in coming to Oregon to deploy buoys, possibly open offices here. And Oregon Iron Works has been um, working with, with all technology providers um, in, in wanting to, to help them come to Oregon, build buoys in Oregon, create jobs in Oregon, and improve their technology. New Jersey-based Ocean Power Technologies chose Oregon as the place to manufacture and deploy their wave energy buoys. They're visiting Oregon Ironworks, where the first buoy is nearing completion. The uh, company was formed in uh, 1984, began operations in 94, and the purpose of the company was to develop a system that could convert the enormous amount of uh, mechanical energy in ocean waves into clean, uh, low-cost, uh, uh, green energy. We have been working with Oregon Ironworks over the period of two to three years. Uh, that culminated in Ocean Power Technologies issuing a uh, purchase order to Oregon Ironworks to build the, the first uh, power buoy. This will be completed by the end of the year and early next year it will be deployed in the ocean. Uh, off, off Reedsport. That is the first of what will then be a 10 buoy array which will be connected to the grid uh, at um, Gardner which is a substation near Reedsport. Reedsport first became involved about five and a half years ago uh, or just slightly more than that when two studies were released, one by Oregon State University and one by the Electric Power Research Institute, EPRI, out of Palo Alto, California, and they identified the Oregon coast as the premier wave environment for wave power, and they said the hot spot on the Oregon coast happened to be just off the coast at Reedsport because of the availability of infrastructure to put the, uh, put the juice on, on the grid, as well as uh, substations nearby, and actually an affluent pipe uh, from an abandoned mill site or an old mill site that would allow the, uh, the cabling to bring the, the electricity ashore. So there was a, a, a kind of a perfect storm of coincidences that, that brought us to Reedsport, as well as a uh, great wave environment and uh, topography in the bottom of the ocean that meets the demands of wave energy. We started to look along the west coast and realized that uh, Oregon had extremely good wave energy conditions. 
uh, the uh, grid line which uh, feeds along the whole west coast of the US is very close to the ocean, uh, which is a great advantage, meaning that once we generate the power, uh, we can uh, very easily, uh, in the space of a few miles, connect to the grid where it comes ashore. And then, then we uh, found that the state of Oregon, uh, both the people who live in Oregon and the, the government of Oregon, were very supportive of what we were interested in doing, which was to build uh, a demonstration wave power station here on the, uh, in America on the West Coast. The way the system works uh, simply is that we have a long tube, which we call a spa, most of which uh, is below the surface of the water. And uh, near the top of that spa, uh, there is a float, uh, which uh, like a donut effectively, um, this float has a hole in the center, which allows it to slide up and down on the spa. So as the wave approaches the buoy, the, uh, the wave moves that float up and then down on the spa. And that is the mechanical energy which we capture and then we uh, transfer that via a drive shaft uh, into the spa uh, and inside the drive shaft is uh, the power takeoff that converts that uh, mechanical power, that driving mechanical power into rotary mechanical power which then turns an electrical generator. All that is contained in a watertight spa not exposed to the ocean at all and then the electrical power which is generated under the control of the computer is then uh, connected to the outside world via a cable. Uh, we've also developed what we call an underwater substation uh, which sits on the seabed and uh, an array of buoys uh, are, have their outputs connected into that underwater substation where the voltage is raised to the right level and the power is transferred and is on an underwater cable to the shore where it then directly connects into the grid. EPRI, the Electric Power Research Institute, has done some significant studies that have showed that we have up to two days of predictability, of forecasting, for what a wave installation would be putting onto the grid, and that is significant for utilities. On the average, um, one, one house uses a kilowatt of energy. So um, our initial units are 150 kilowatts. So each, each buoy, the kind that, the first one of which is being built here at Oregon Ironworks, is capable of providing power for about 150 homes. So for example, to power the downtown business district of Portland, about 50 megawatts, if you were using buoys of about 500 kilowatts, each, you would need about 100 of those buoys to power the downtown Portland business district. We will later on be developing a, a larger uh, unit, which will be a 500 kilowatt unit, three, three, more than three times the size, and that will produce more than three times the amount of power per, per, per unit. OSU has been involved in the wave energy industry for a long time. They've done the research, they're looking at how we get more efficient. I know there's been a lot of technology providers that have gone to OSU and wanted them to be part of their, their team and help them with their research so they can improve their, uh, their buoys. Oregon uh, State University has been designated as a center of excellence for, for wave energy. And very appropriately, they have a team of great people there who have been working on wave energy uh, for many years. They have helped us in doing some of the environmental studies, for example, the studies of the effects on whales of, of these power buoys, as we call them. So Oregon State is one half of the federal um, marine hydrokinetics research lab uh, on the West Coast along with the University of Washington, and that is the Northwest National Marine Renewable Energy Center. Our focus is really on evaluation and helping developers advance their technologies so that they can develop commercial wave installations that would, could be deployed.
deployed off the, off the Oregon coast in a responsible way and there have been a lot of outreach efforts with the ocean community to help enable that responsible development. And another key component of that is the environmental aspects. And so we're also looking at and researching potential environmental impacts and how can they be prevented as well. There are issues that obviously we need to, to deal with. There are human stakeholders um, and, uh, and environmental uh, issues that we need to make sure that we're worried about uh, and that we're working through. Migratory species, whales, you know, obviously you don't want um, a migration taking place through the middle of a wave farm. Oregon State's working on a project for uh, trying to make sure that those species are diverted away from the farm. I think it's very good that there be a university in Oregon that is uh, focused on wave energy and we expect to uh, continue to work and probably increase our relationship with with the people at Oregon State University. As I said to Professor Von Juan, we have a need for young engineers and scientists. And uh, if you have a program, which they do, of uh, training uh, engineers and researchers in wave energy, we will be looking for many of those people uh, to join our company. It's gonna take that type of research that will provide the buoys of the future that create power at, at, a, at a cost point that's competitive with what it costs to build new uh, generating stations um, uh, inland.